why all of a sudden Urushi and not Celluloid? Well, spoiler alert, it's gonna be a very very tricky subject but I do hope that I'm gonna pick my words carefully and by the end of this video I'm gonna show you a little bit more behind my philosophy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Amy from Penventure. Welcome to another Pen Talk 101 video. The title of this video is a little bit clickbaity, but let me explain why Urushi and not Celluloid. Have you seen lately that I gravitate a little bit more towards Urushi fountain pens, this art form? Well, this is without any question of a doubt that I do have a little bit of change in my philosophy in regards of collecting fountain pens. I do want to say from the get going, from the beginning, that I am a super, super big fan of celluloid fountain pens and I'm gonna continue getting celluloid fountain pens in my collection, but that doesn't mean that I will not be opened towards Urushi fountain pens, which I do believe they have a little bit of an edge. Let's start first with celluloid. What is celluloid? Celluloid is a natural material made from cotton fibers that are soaked in camphor. Once they become like a gooey mass, they are just simply from that point combined with pigments, with all of the things that give it color and structure. Then those slabs of materials are combined or made into bars separately as individual colors and that is celluloid. Well, celluloid is not produced anymore for many, many decades because it's a very, very flammable process. What we have today is what is left as a stock that's never been used in regards of making fountain pens. And this is why celluloid is very, very precious. Then it's very difficult to work with because once you get fresh celluloid, well, I mean, not fresh like freshly made, but fresh in regards of being uh, taken from a bar shape into the shape of a fountain pen. Once you start to cut and get into that bar of celluloid, well, that's the point where you need a lot of skill because you need to actually cut a little bit longer. If you want a part which is one centimeter, you will actually have to cut it a little bit over one centimeter because you have to take into consideration the fact that that celluloid will shrink while it's getting cured to be worked. And in between each step of the manufacturing process, it needs time to cure and shrink and get to a very, very stable form. In regards of working with celluloid, you put it on the lathe, you turn it. If you go fast, it's gonna catch fire. So that is why it's actually very, very hard to work with celluloid. There are some companies that do wonders with their celluloids and I have here some of my celluloid fountain pens which I want to share them with you. And here we have a nice array of celluloids from Leonardo of Cina Italiana. As you can clearly see, we do have stunning colors and Italian celluloid has a thing for colors. It's flashy, it's, it's eye-capturing, something that I cannot explain why I feel like I'm drawn to the celluloid. Have a look at this beautiful, beautiful Rosso 1930 Extra, which is my personal fountain pen collection. I do love this celluloid, and I do love the fact that Montegrappa has included a lot of research into their process of manufacturing fountain pens out of celluloid, and I've seen it in person, that process and how they bake the celluloid parts for many years in curing ovens before working them in fountain pens. Anyway, if you want to check that video, I'm gonna get you that link up here and you can check my visit to the Montegrappa factory and you can clearly see there a few snapshots of those curing ovens and how intricate is this process and how much time it takes. Let me show you some more fountain pens out of celluloid. This is my Paragon Arco Bronze celluloid. It's an Omas. This is a magical fountain pen, which lately I am using it every single day. But I'm gonna show you here, like for example, this is where we have like a millimeter or maybe a little bit under where I can fit my fingernail. And that is from the fact that the material has shrinked. It's a byproduct, a natural process of this material to actually eliminate the gas from inside and to cure and to shrink and to move. And it gives it a very, very nice appealing of a natural substance. It is above plastic because it has life. It 
is a natural substance. It's the end result of a natural process in which a natural material is taken and worked into this impressive colors that we have like for example take a look here have this purple beautiful beautiful celluloid we have this cracked ice ex omas celluloid i do love my celluloid fountain pens am i gonna stop collecting uh celluloids no i am gonna have more celluloid fountain pens but i'm gonna have them being aware of the fact that celluloid it is very very tricky as a material it needs to be stored in a proper way to expand its life because it's uh, shelf life is limited and you can see this with vintage fountain pens made out of celluloid that simply just crumble if you store it in a confined environment it actually ages much more abruptly and quickly that gas is going to affect the overall aging of that material and it's going to lose in time its integrity this process will actually take like 30 40 50 i don't know how many years it is also very very important to have this in your mind that the actual way that a company is working celluloid and it's curing it's gonna make its shelf life longer or shorter and you can clearly see this because if a celluloid it's cured properly every single pan made out of that celluloid it's gonna age uniform and it's not gonna have super super big wedges and shrinking and uh, moving and all of that that is a good sign to have on a fountain pen as in you can clearly see here from leonardo from monte grappa from other creations made out of celluloid like this tibaldi this fountain pen has probably well over 15 years since it's made but everything it's screwing in perfectly everything fits all of the tolerances are sublime and this is a good good sign to have on a celluloid fountain pen what i want to say is that celluloid fountain pens have a shelf life they are not indefinitely gonna keep its original shape like in day one and uh, the environment the way the material is worked everything it's gonna affect its shelf life this is what is celluloid my point is that if you are gonna acquire a celluloid fountain pen know all of these things before and judge from that point because an investment into a writing instrument which is made out of celluloid can be quite quite expensive this is why i think lately i've started to open up to more and more urushi creations and why is that well that is because i do believe that urushi is going to be uh the next celluloid fever in regards of writing instruments and i say this right now check your calendars it's 2023 it's april because you will see that in two or three years from now on you will see more and more urushi let's call them high-end writing instruments made out of ebonite which are coated in urushi and those will take the place of celluloid in a few years because the market is going to adapt and people will understand more and more and they will want to explore and see these writing instruments and what is very very special about them now let me explain what it is urushi urushi is actually a art form um, originating from asia the, the actual technique implies that the sap of the lacquer tree it's harvested then it is mixed up with all sorts of uh, pigments with uh, i've seen with rice because rice contains starch and starch is actually uh, gooey and is like a glue but Again, I'm not completely, completely sure of that. That is to be left with the artist that is going to apply that Urushi coating. Urushi, it's able to be passed down from uh, one person to the other by teaching, by apprenticeship. And I do believe we will have more and more Urushi fountain pens more available on the market and they will be much more sought after and they will be uh, more visible in the coming time as an art form urushi can uh, be uh, from a very very simple form up to something super super exuberant and the most simple form is something which is one single color and i have 
uh, such uh, a fountain pen right here. This is my Namiki Emperor. And as you can clearly see, this is red. It's called Vermilion and it has only one color, one uniform color of lacquer, which is applied in multiple layers. In between each layer, there is sanding, there is curing, there is time to be spent on making this flawless, flawless surface appear like uh, something that you will just simply see yourself in the mirror, in the reflection. So this is something which I believe it's a stunning and very, very simple form uh, in regards of Rushi. Now let's go one step further. At level two, we do have Taminuri. And what I have here is Kuro Taminuri on my Nakaya Dorsal Fin V2. Taminuri as a technique is about having two individual colors, one uh, underneath and one on top. Usually the one on top, it's slightly darker and it leaves at the edges some of the underneath color to be seen. The actual philosophy behind this technique is like a person is watching a pond and in the middle where the water is much more deep, you wouldn't see anything. Like for example, you will see pitch dark or black and on the edges, you will see uh, the underneath colors of that pond. So that is Tamin Nuri, two different colors stacked. Let's call them like this. Let's go one step further from here. And we have Urushi and Maki A. Maki A is actually the painting on Urushi with Urushi layers. Actually, this is where we are gonna get into a place which there is no coming back. That is pretty much on top and uh, what we have here is a nice example of this um, Maki A which is actually painting it has a 3d effect colorful it is very very pretty it's a exuberant technique in regards of Urushi and it's simply an art form and this is made by hand and it takes like many 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 decades of experience. This is why I do believe that acquiring an Urushi fountain pen is going to support this art form and a single person. Let's move further and if we go one step further with this art form and I don't have a fountain pen of that nature right here, it is Chinkin. It's the ultimate level of expression in art form in regards of Urushi. Why is that? Because Chinkin it is implied that a chisel is used to actually carve the, the Urushi layer and then to deposit gold dust in that carving like this, you could actually obtain a picture or a physical representation of an object, an animal, a theme. That is the place where you actually have the most intricate level, the most difficult level getting your art form on a writing instrument in Rushi because once you do a mark or you carve something wrong, there is no going back from that point. You actually throw the piece because you wouldn't have the means to cover that chisel mark with something else and it's going to be visible. So that is why it is the ultimate, ultimate level. Now let's put everything together. You seen and heard some of the, the, the philosophy behind Silhouette Fountain Pass. Now I've showed you some of my Urushi Fountain Pass. We are going to go to the question, why Urushi and not Silhouette? Technically speaking, I'm still going to have more Silhouette Fountain Pass in my personal fountain pen collection and I'm going to develop some Silhouette Fountain Pass as exclusives, you have to take into consideration the fact that celluloid as a material, it is very difficult to source, it is very difficult to be worked, then it is far difficult to be worked correctly. Then take into consideration the fact that maybe 50, 80, I don't know how many years down from this point, it is no longer gonna be of the same look, feel and quality like in day one if you are gonna use it and own it for I don't know three four five six decades from now on I myself am looking forward at getting solid fountain pens from companies that I am sure 100% that they know how to work celluloid. They have a very good understanding of celluloid fountain pens 
and for that reason I will go forward and have more celluloid phones and that's I'm not gonna stop I am very very aware of this fact and why Urushi more than celluloid because first of all I do believe in regards of aging it's gonna age a little bit better than celluloid of course it's gonna change the color so one of the big enemies of Urushi fountain pens is actually keeping them in direct sunlight for some people may be looking very very pretty like for example I've seen some uh, Namiki Emperor fountain pens red like this one becoming orange and for some people that will be very very interesting to see that process uh, for me I would like to keep it as red as possible and this is why I'm not keeping it in direct sunlight I know for sure that's gonna be a little bit more resilient than celluloid because we do have examples of uh, objects like boxes like uh, bowls which are covered in urushi lacquer and they survived for hundreds of years so this is where i am a little bit more sure of the fact that a, a fountain pen which features urushi is going to be a little bit more resilient than a celluloid fountain pen anyway urushi can be repaired in the regards of celluloid that is a little bit more tricky who can say for sure that 20 30 years from now they're gonna have a piece of that specific color of a celluloid to manufacture a cap if your cap is gonna be cracking. In regards of Urushi, I know for sure that it can be fixed because I fixed an Urushi fountain pen of mine. If it has some small imperfections with time, with use, with all of that, it can be fixed. Another point would be the fact that when you acquire a Urushi fountain pen, you actually know for sure that if you today purchase such a fountain pen it means that some of those funds would end up with the person that's going to apply that urushi on that fountain pen that person took many decades of work uh, of uh, just simply sacrificing its time its patience to uh, dedicate himself towards this art form and when you purchase a urushi fountain pen and just this eye candy this is a namiki emperor double dragon and uh, it's 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 stunning i uh, i'm going to tell you the story of this fountain pen in a later video anyway when you acquire such a writing instrument you know for sure that some of that funds will travel up the chain towards an artist that's going to provide his services towards making you that fountain pen and this is why I do maybe look a little bit higher in regards of Urushi versus celluloid fountain pens. This is my philosophy in regards of celluloid versus Urushi fountain pens. I don't know uh, what is your philosophy and I would be very very curious to know what you think about this topic and uh, if you have such uh, questions regarding this topic or suggestions or if you want to share your philosophy use the comment section down below i will be very curious to know what are your thoughts regarding this of course thank you for spending your time with me on the penventure youtube channel like always if you want to have your writing as meant from penventure scroll down a little bit you'll find the details for our website our social media accounts phone number anything and everything that you may need in order to get in contact with me and i'm gonna help you with that purchase like always don't forget to support the growth of the fan adventure youtube channel give this video a big thumbs up this will help me a lot and if you're not subscribed and if you consider subscribing just click there turn on the notification bell on and you will be notified whenever we have new content speaking about content if you want to continue watching my videos I'm going to leave this right here. You can click and enjoy. As always, I'm your host, Amy from Pen Venture. I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.